Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Poltergeist. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with a little boy named Griffin, playing video games inside a car. His mother tells him to be ready once they arrive at their new house. Griffin is also with his sisters. The younger one is Madison, and the older one is Kendra. Shortly after, their father tells them they've arrived. When they enter their new house, a lady realtor welcomes them. They go inside for a tour around the house. The couple check the upstairs with the realtor, while Griffin uncomfortably glances at the stairs to his attic bedroom. Soon after, he heads to another room and sees Madison talking to the closet. He asks her who she's talking to, but Madison responds that she's talking with no one and runs outside. After a while, a truck arrives to unload their baggage from their old house. Within their belongings, father spots a baseball glove, so he plays catch with Griffin. Father throws a baseball at Griffin, and the baseball gets stuck in a tree. Griffin goes to retrieve it and asks Madison if she saw the ball. She points up and Griffin sees the ball, but he gets an eerie feeling from the tree. Suddenly, the tree blows a gust of wind at Griffin, and he runs to mother to tell her about the creepy tree. She doesn't take him seriously and continues with unpacking their belongings. Soon after, she asks Griffin if he wants to check his new room, so they head inside. Later at night, Griffin goes to Madison's room to ask what she's doing. Madison then shows Griffin a trick. She grabs the knob of the closet door, and her hair suddenly spikes up. Griffin tries the same thing, and they both laugh. Meanwhile, Mother is doing laundry. Her earrings fall behind the washing machine, and she attempts to get them back. Suddenly, the washing machine turns on. As she goes to check the washing machine, she accidentally touches a weird substance. And then, weird liquid oozes out from the washing machine, making Mother stand up and step back. Meanwhile, Kendra is watching a reality show about paranormal activities. Mother tells her to keep the volume down as it's the kid's bedtime. After that, Mother heads to the room and tells the playing Griffin and Madison to go to bed. After some time, Mother tucks Griffin in bed. Griffin tells her that he's scared of the dark, and she tells Griffin that there's nothing to be afraid of. Soon after, she leaves him with a nightlight, but Griffin still can't sleep. He then gets up and opens a door. He sees a red ball dangling in a wire and proceeds to grab it. Toys fall off after he grabs the ball. And then, it turns out that the red ball was a toy clown's nose, and it scares Griffin away. He then barges inside his parents' room, telling them that there's something in his room. Father goes to Griffin's bedroom and inspects the storage where Griffin found the toy clown. And suddenly, a scorb jumps out of the storage. Later on, Griffin ends up sleeping in his parents' bedroom. But weird things happen, as the lights keep turning on and off around the house. In the middle of the night, Griffin wakes up, hearing someone talking. He goes downstairs to check and sees Madison talking to the television all by herself. Griffin asks Madison what's going on, and Madison says that they're coming. Suddenly, several hands appear from inside the television. Griffin attempts to unplug the television off, but even after he unplugs it, the television is still on. The chandelier lights up and spins fast. Their parents and Kendra arrive downstairs because of the noise. Madison says that they're already here, as though she's referring to something ominous. The next day, while they work outside in the garden, Mother asks Madison about last night. Madison tells her that it's just her friends. Meanwhile, Father goes to buy some traps to catch the score in Griffin's room. Just then, Griffin digs out a piece of bone in their front yard. But Mother tells them to just rebury it. Later inside the house, Griffin grabs the box full of comic books and heads upstairs. Suddenly, a ball rolls to a door near him. Griffin grabs the ball, thinking it came from Madison's room. As he enters Madison's room to return the ball, the ball rolls towards the closet. Griffin slowly steps back, but the door is being blocked by the books, arranged like a brick wall, but it falls shortly after. Griffin then looks behind his back and sees that the ball is gone. After a while, father arrives back from the store and calls the whole family to gather. During the gathering, Griffin tries to tell his dad about what happened earlier, but father and everyone keep on ignoring him. Griffin gets frustrated as everyone tries to ignore what he's trying to say, so he leaves them. Shortly after, while father is assembling the score trap, Mother arrives and says that there might be something wrong with Griffin, since he's saying crazy things. However, Father thinks that it's just the kid's imagination, and it's fine. After finishing the trap, Mother and Father leave the children at home, as they attend their colleague's dinner. After they leave, Kendra gets Madison ready for bed, and Griffin goes downstairs to Madison's room. He can't sleep, since there is a storm coming. At the dinner party, the couple learn from their colleagues that their neighborhood was once a cemetery. Back at the house, rain starts pouring down. Kendra is texting with her phone. Suddenly, her phone starts to glitch, and Kendra gets up from the sofa and wanders around to find a better reception. Meanwhile, 
Griffin also gets up from his bed, since he gets frightened by the tree waving by the window. Griffin tries to turn the lights on, but it doesn't work due to the storm. He hides inside his blanket, while whispering to himself that there's nothing to be afraid of. Meanwhile, Kendra continues to wander around. The door to the laundry room suddenly opens, and Kendra checks inside. Inside, she sees the floor cracking, and she removes the crack piece. Suddenly, a weird liquid oozes out from it, and she gets scared. She senses someone behind her, and sees a dried-up corpse holding a rake. And then, lights flicker, and Kendra gets up and tries to run. But Hand grabs her leg from the cracked floor. She screams for help, but the door shuts closed on its own. On the other hand, Griffin grabs a flashlight and lights up the toy clown. Griffin gets scared by the toy clown, and drops his flashlight. Then, as Griffin picks up the flashlight, he notices the red nose of the toy clown. He points the flashlight to the red nose clown that is being dragged around the floor. He asks if it's his dad doing a prank. However, the toy clown suddenly gets behind him, and jumps at him. Griffin manages to push it away, and kick the toy clown, breaking its head. Griffin soon leaves his room to find his siblings. Griffin arrives at Madison's room, and sees her sitting by the corner. Madison says that she's scared, and Griffin tells her to stay away from the closet. Suddenly, he sees the tree waving by the window. Griffin then runs downstairs, but freezes as if something is holding him in place. Meanwhile, Kendra manages to get out of the cracked floor, but can't escape as the door is locked, so she screams for help. Just then, Griffin gets grabbed by the tree, and he also screams for help. Meanwhile, Madison is in her room, sitting by the corner. And then, the closet opens wide, inviting her inside. A light suddenly comes out of the lampshade and light bulb. It enters the closet, as Madison watches it go in. Her toy pig also rolls towards the closet, and she tries to get her toy back. Suddenly, the light soon fades away into the darkness. As Madison looks back, she realizes she's trapped inside the closet. She tries to escape, but gets dragged away, as arms grab her from the darkness. Just then, father and mother arrive home. They quickly stop the car, as they both spot Griffin up the tree. Griffin falls to the ground. He quickly tells them what happened. Kendra also manages to escape outside, and meets with her parents. She tells them about what also happened to her. They quickly run upstairs to look for Madison. Father opens the closet, but there is no sign of her. Griffin goes downstairs to the living room. The television suddenly turns on, with Madison's voice calling for her mom. Griffin calls out to mother to show her Madison inside the television. The couple rush downstairs, and Mother sees the glitched television, and hears the voice of Madison calling out to her. As Mother panics, Father tries to calm her down, convincing her not to call the cops, as the cops will only blame them for what happened. The next day, the couple go to the Department of Paranormal Research, and ask them for help. Griffin blames himself for the disappearance of Madison. He begs the department's head, named Ms. Antiparanormal, to save his sister. And so, the department's crew starts investigating their house. As they search Madison's room where she was last seen, one of Ms. Antiparanormal's crew talks about a similar case, where a moving object was recorded as a paranormal event. But this time, he says that their case might be worse than the previous one. Just then, as he tries to take a seat on Madison's small chair, the chair suddenly flies off and breaks as it hits a wall. After investigating for a while, Ms. Antiparanormal tells that what they have inside their house is not a classic haunting, but a poltergeist intrusion. Their situation is more violent than simple noises and moving objects. After Ms. Antiparanormal explains the problem in their home, Father grabs a drink of liquor to calm his nerves. But as he drinks the liquor, he pukes a black liquid substance with worms inside. It turns out that he's only hallucinating. Mother checks on him, and asks him what is wrong. Father blames himself that he should have been home, but Mother tries to be optimistic about the situation. After a while, the team starts to attach wirings into their house, to further investigate the situation. The crew member tries to invite Griffin to be in the reality show to be rich, but Griffin rejects and says that he only wants Madison back. Shortly after, the crew member goes to Madison's closet to attach a heat sensor. Aided with light to the closet, he starts to investigate the walls. He tries to drill a hole in the wall, but the drill gets swallowed by it. He peeks at the hole, and puts his hand inside, trying to get the drill back. However, something grabs his hand, and starts to drag him. The drill suddenly turns on and starts making holes closing in on his face, Fortunately, he manages to get away from the wall, and he sees handprints on his arm. He looks back at the wall, but it returns to its normal state with the drill on the floor, and the crew member sees that the handprints on his arms are gone. The following moment, Ms. Antiparanormal proceeds to explain to the two kids that Madison is in another dimension. Griffin suggests that someone should go there to get Madison, and show her the way back. But they have to find a way in first. After a while, Ms. Antiparanormal tells the family that Madison can hear them, but they can't hear Madison. So she introduces a device that filters out all the interference, so that they can talk to Madison on the television. 
When the device is turned on, Mother calls out to Madison. They manage to communicate with Madison, and they try to lead Madison back to them. However, they realize that Madison is not alone in the other dimension. Just then, the television breaks, and the lights suddenly turn off. One of the lights turns back on, and reveals a shadow of Madison. The light moves in different places, making Madison's shadow able to move. Her shadow then heads upstairs, and Father follows it. The following moment, Father enters Madison's room, and sees the shadow sitting in the closet. He tries to touch the shadow figure of Madison, but when the shadow faces him, its face is distorted and hollow. The shadow figure suddenly screams, and pushes Father away, making him crash on the table. Father grabs a leg from the table, and repeatedly smashes the wall of the closet. The closet suddenly lights up, blinding Father, while the others see the light from the camera. Meanwhile downstairs, Griffin sees something shining from the ceiling, and an object falls from that suddenly. Fortunately, Mother manages to grab Griffin, before the object can crush him. Father goes back downstairs, and Ms. Antiparanormal points to the ceiling where the object fell from, indicating that it could work as Madison's exit. The next day, the host of the horror documentaries Kendra watches, arrives as help for Madison's paranormal dilemma. He quickly enters the house, and inspects the surroundings. The host then says that the house is unclean. They gather and discuss the situation. The host tells the family that the neighborhood only moved the headstones, but the bodies of the dead were still around the neighborhood. After a discussion, they prepare their plan to get Madison back. The crew member distributes everyone a GPS tracker to catch their location. Mother later learns that the host and Ms. Antiparanormal were husband and wife in the past. After they're done preparing, they commence their plan on getting Madison back. Griffin flies the drone towards Madison's room, and it approaches the closet. As the drone enters the closet, the closet becomes a portal to another dimension with a dark surrounding. They see Madison through the drone's camera, but she gets dragged by the poltergeist. They argue and panic as to who will rescue Madison. However, Griffin goes alone upstairs to Madison's bedroom, and tries to enter the portal. The host orders them to go downstairs, and pull the rope attached to Griffin when he gives the signal. They rush downstairs, and get ready to pull the rope. They see Griffin through the drone's camera, searching for Madison. Griffin tries to convince Madison to go with him, but Madison replies that the poltergeist won't let her leave. Fortunately, he convinces her to come with him, and they hold hands. Griffin and Madison then run towards the rope, manage to get out of the dimension, and exit from the ceiling. Mother and the others rush to aid the unconscious Griffin and Madison. They put both of them in a bathtub full of water. Griffin and Madison successfully wake up, so the team feels relief. Afterward, the family pack their belongings, and hurry to get out of the house. When they thought that the house was already clean, Madison suddenly says that it is still haunted, since the spirits didn't go in the light to pass on peacefully. Just as they were about to leave, their car was flipped suddenly, and dragged back inside the house. Inside, the family is getting out of the car. When they look to check up on Madison, they see her outside the car, and suddenly get pulled upstairs. Mother rushes upstairs and manages to grab Madison's hand, before she could be sucked into the portal. Father and the others manage to arrive in time, and help Mother pull Madison out. The poltergeists go out of the portal and grab Madison's leg, desperately trying to get her inside the portal. The host then recites words. As a result, the poltergeists return inside the portal. The host decides to head inside the house. Ms. Antiparanormal is trying to stop him, but he insists on leading the spirits to the light, while Mother and the others exit out of the window. Soon after, the host goes upstairs, and heads inside the portal, determined to sacrifice himself for the little girl back. Father kicks the window and manages to exit, before the house can collapse. When they get outside, Ms. Antiparanormal lends her car to the family, and Father quickly drives. Griffin looks back at the house, while the car drives away. He sees the house exploding, and a beam of light appearing. A while later, they manage to get away from the house. Meanwhile, Ms. Antiparanormal and the others try to find the host's location inside the house, tracking his GPS. After some time, his GPS gets detected, showing hope he's still alive. Another day arrives. Father and his family search for a house they can move into. When they find a new house, it looks similar to the haunted house they recently moved into. So they ditch the realtor and drive their smelly ass away in an instant. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.